Photo nerds, welcome back to episode three of how to use control points inside of the Nick collection. Today should be actually a short video as long as I can keep myself from rambling too much. I promise I really did try. I really, really did. The reason that it's going to be a short video is because a lot of the things that we did in the last video use the analog effects uh, filter. A lot of those things are very similar, uh, pretty much identical to what we can do in today's filter. Today we're going to open up Viveza and show you what we can do in there. But if you haven't watched the, the analog effects video, I'm going to put a card, a link, a card up there as well as in the description. You should go watch that video first and then come back and watch this video. That way I don't have to cover all of the exact same things that I covered there over here. And that'll shorten this video up. But Viveza is a really, really awesome. Aside from color effects, Viveza is probably my number two favorite filter built into the entire Google collection. And the reason for this is that you can do a lot of the same adjustments inside of Lightroom that you can do using this Viveza effects filter. But the difference is that you can do this here with, with way more control than you can inside of Lightroom. So to me, it's like the perfect complement to Lightroom. In other words, if you were to go into Lightroom and make a bunch of adjustments and then get stuck on some things or want to make some adjustments to some other stuff and you're not really sure how to do it, Viveza could be the ticket for you. So let's jump in and show you exactly what it is that I'm talking about. That way you can get a better understanding of what it is that I mean by perfect complement. So here, I've got an image up. What we're going to do is head on up to Photo, Edit In, and we're gonna go to Viveza 2. And we're gonna let this puppy open after we choose to open with any Lightroom adjustments. So everything that you do here, mostly everything that you do here is all about control points. This application is control point heavy. So it's the perfect uh, tutorial as it relates to using control points. Before we touch a control point, you've got this panel over on the right hand side. Now in the past Nick filter videos, we've talked about how there was a left, a middle and a right side to the application. And here there's really only a middle and a right side. There is no left side. So when you're on the right hand side, any of these adjustments that we see here are global adjustments, which means they're going to affect everything in the photograph. But to be quite honest with you, it's very rare that you're going to use this application this way because you've already done your global adjustments inside of Lightroom by chance. You're really only coming in here when you want to make changes that are specific in nature. So I'm not going to dive into doing global adjustments because that's not really what we're using this uh, filter for. We're using it to be specific. So let's be specific. I like being specific. Let's be specific. All right, we've got some control points here and they're right at the top of the page because they know that for the most part, that's what we're gonna be doing. So to add a control point, we just click on the button and then it's up to you to decide where on the picture do you wanna drop the point? What is it that you're trying to change or affect? I'm gonna start by messing around with this little uh, colored bush in the bottom right hand corner of the picture. And I'm just gonna Click there and drop the point and you'll see um, that the point is now live on the photograph. And the adjustments that we have here are a lot different or maybe not a lot different, but are, but are definitely different than what we had in the analog effects. Here, what we have are some different adjustments. We've, we've got the ability to adjust our brightness, contrast, saturation, structure, structure is very similar to clarity inside of Lightroom. Kind of gives the appearance as though there's a little bit of sharpening being applied. Uh, we can also affect um, our shadows as well as warmth, which is like a temperature slider. And then where it gets a little different is we can 
we can change our red, green, and blue channels as well as the hue of a color as well. So between warmth, red, green, blue, and hue, you really can do quite a bit as it relates to color uh, in, in this uh, filter. So as mentioned in analog effects, the power of this is being able to see the mask. So we're going to click this little uh, checkbox here so that we can see what the mask is looking like. And again, as I move this around, we'll actually see exactly what's being affected. So the idea is to whatever is white is what you're trying to change. So you want to restrict this mask down to as much black and as little white as you feel is necessary. So in this instance, I don't want the white spilling into the background. I'm trying to consolidate the white onto this little bush here. So if I maybe bring the size or the radius of this uh, down by clicking on this little button here at the very top, I can restrict this down even more. Once I have my mask in place, I can play with whatever it is I want to play with. So here's a fun little uh, tip for you. Once you've restricted the mask and you're ready to start making adjustments, you can do it two ways. You can either make the adjustments on the pin or you can make the adjustments over on the right hand side. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I go to the brightness slider and I click on it and I start to drag it up and down, you're going to notice that not only is the adjustment changing on the picture because I'm moving the slider back and forth, it's also moving the slider on the right hand side here. So if you look closely as I move this back and forth on the right hand side, you're going to notice that the number is changing. So it's really up to you. Do you want to do it on the pin or do you want to do it on the right hand side? It's really a personal preference. There's no right or wrong answer there. But what you're going to do is just kind of narrow in these adjustments until you get what you want. So I'm going to just maybe add some contrast, add a little bit of saturation, and maybe add some structure to this. Um, maybe add a little warmth. All right, that looks pretty good. Once I've done these changes, the other thing that we can do is we can duplicate a pin. So to duplicate a pin, we're just going to go right here and click this button. And now we've got two of them. But what's nice about this is I can take that second pin and move it somewhere up here at this part of the picture because that foliage in the background is similar to the foliage that was right here in the foreground. But I want to see this as a mask. So I'm going to turn the mask on and I'm going to move this around until I can kind of see um, what's being affected and you can see if I'm not careful there's quite a bit of spillover this adjustment is falling into the rocks and I don't want that to happen so I'm going to shrink this down so that um, it's of greater effect maybe something like that and then I'll turn the mask off and that looks that looks pretty good right there now all the adjustments that I made on the first pin are here on the second pin. You can see those adjustments here, but because the pins are separated, I can go in and affect one without affecting the other. When you duplicate a pin, it just copies all of the settings from the first pin onto the second pin. It gives you a quick starting point. And then from there, you can go in and tweak it. So for example, I think the brightness on here is a bit strong, so I'm just gonna back that brightness down a little bit. And then I'm going to duplicate this pin one more time so that way I can move it up towards the foliage maybe on this part of the picture. So if you look down here in my control points list, I now have three points um, for the three pins that I dropped on the picture and they're all active. I know they're active because the checkbox on all three of these is active. So let's go ahead and make a new pin. This time I want to affect the water. So I'm going to grab add, go drop it on the water. Now I see in my list that there's a fourth point and I'm going to turn the mask on so that way I can see what's being affected here. And I'm trying to restrict this, you know, pretty much to as much of the water as possible. Um, so something like that looks pretty good. You can see how these masks are huge. 
uh, in the grand scheme of things. And so now that I know I have the water selected, I'm going to add some structure to this. I'm going to maybe bring the brightness down a little bit, maybe even bring uh, these uh, the saturation up a little bit. Uh, that's looking pretty good. Maybe even bring the shadows down. And I want to add a little bit more uh, green to this water. So bluish green, so to speak. All right, something like that looks pretty good. Now, if you want to see what that adjustment was, just that adjustment by itself, if you want to see the before and after of that, you can just go over to your control points list and you know, check that box for that point on and off. And you can see how that affected the water pretty dramatically. Let's add another control point, this time for the rocks. So we're going to go up to the top, grab a control point, drop it on the rocks, and we're going to look at it via a mask so we can see exactly what's being affected here. And actually, that did a pretty good job of just controlling or uh, choosing the rocks rather um, that looks pretty good and I'm just going to do a couple things here maybe pull the clarity up on it and maybe even pull the saturation up on it just to try and get a little bit more color in those rocks not too much uh, something like that again if I want to see the before and after I can just toggle this on and off and you see how nice that looks now the last part is I want to affect the sky so in something like this, you may have already made those adjustments to the sky inside a Lightroom via like a graduated filter or something like that. But we can do something similar here by using a control point, duplicating the points, and then creating a group. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to grab one control point and drop it on the sky. And I'm going to turn this, the mask on so I can see what's being affected. That looks pretty good. Now. To duplicate, <clears throat> you can do this a couple ways. You can either click that duplicate button right here, but we've done that already. So here's a new trick. The new trick would be to hold your option key down and drag this pin and you'll see how it creates another pin. Again, if I hold option or alt on a PC and drag, you'll see that it's, it's duplicating the pin. So I'm gonna do this a few times until it goes all the way across. I'm just gonna keep duplicating these something like that looks pretty good and I'm going to just uh, play with the radius on a couple of these just to make sure that I got that right it's really not going to affect too much all right now I've got I don't know 10 pins up here you know um, I don't want to have to affect each of these individually. So the next best thing would be to click and drag across all of these pins, which allows me to select all of them at one time. And now we're going to group them into one pin. So I'm taking essentially all of these pins and making them one pin. And the advantage of that is it allows me now that I have one pin, I can just make one adjustment to one pin versus having to make the same adjustment over all of these pins. It's a much more effective way of working. And it also keeps your control point list under control because instead of having 15 control pins here, now I just have one group. So I can turn that group on and off and that looks much, much better. So with that group there, I can go in and maybe increase the saturation a little bit, maybe bring the brightness down just a tad and I can even add a little bit more blue to this, maybe even change the hue just a little. I can do anything that I want to it basically. And it's going to affect the entire sky by using making those changes just to that one group. So if we look at a quick preview of before and after of all of the adjustments that we've made for the sky, the rocks, the water, and the foliage, we've got something really fun happening. Once we're done, we go ahead and hit save. Let this come back into Lightroom. And from there, you can finish making any other necessary adjustments that you may or may not have to do. So Viveza control points are really awesome. It's very similar to the analog effects. The adjustments are a little bit different than what you have there, but 
the power is just the same. And again, this keeps us out of Photoshop and in Lightroom. And for some of you, I think that will make you very happy. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we thank you so much for your support. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Adam. I'm out.